Hey, what's up? Ricky with Fully Charged. We have a very special episode for you today. This is the Canoe LVV. Now, if you're thinking, haven't we covered Canoe before? You're correct. Back in 2019, Chelsea Sexton actually did an episode on Canoe. But so much has changed in the past three years. The pandemic, you've probably heard of it. And so much else, the supply chains and everything else. And for Canoe, particularly, things have changed. They've gone public. They've changed their business models and some other challenges they faced. But I think they found some footing with some commercial customers. So they now have contracts with the US Army, NASA, and particularly with Walmart, who has a purchase order for 4,500 of these for their last mile delivery services. So today we have just enough time here in Dallas, Texas for a first impressions, a quick drive and a ride along. And we're gonna go through all that and more. So this then is the Canoe LDV, and this is Holy Charge. Fully Charged Live is coming to California this September the 10th and 11th, powered by Electrify America. Get your tickets to the number one EV and home energy show now. Why does the canoe matter? You might be thinking a uh, delivery vehicle. Well, first of all, there's also a personal version of this that has a seven seat option. So for a car that's actually four inches shorter than Toyota Prius with all this interior room and an optional third row in this package is pretty rare. Also, you gotta remember, we at Fully Charged are all about reducing our carbon emissions. And right now, delivery is a big part of that equation. Now, because 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart location, you can imagine the impact a car like this could have for that business model. Sure, Amazon is the king right now with their warehouses, but with over 4,000 stores and over 3,800 of them becoming online shipping centers, this could be the car that catapults Walmart and their current brick and mortar business into the online king of retail. Now, the really magical part about this thing is the packaging, okay? Now, in comparison to this, we have a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. We've lined them up in the front, okay? Right in front. Which car do you think is longer? Come with me. <laughs> the canoe finishes right here. The BMW is over a foot longer than the canoe, and yet on the inside, it has 120 cubic feet of cargo space. Thank you so much. That's incredible. So let's talk about the interior of this thing because it is one of the most striking things I've ever seen. Starting with this greenhouse out in front of you, I can see the road, I can see a nickel two feet from the front of this car, which is absolutely amazing. There's no screen off in front of you. You've got this screen right here and you've got your driving information on that screen <laughs> to tell you how fast you're going, what, what gear you're in and all of that. So as a result, the view is unrivaled. And for people who are doing delivery, this has got to be leagues better than anything gasoline where all this area would just be engine and you wouldn't be able to see any of it through. So as a result now, the dashboard is very unconventional and kind of floating, which is a bizarre design aesthetic that I just love. Here are your controls. They're all kind of capacitive touch, AC controls, heated steering wheel. I just checked that out. That does work. It's very impressive. Here on the steering wheel, we have just two controls, two rocker switches, and these adjust the passenger and driver mirrors. On a delivery truck, that's what matters, not music controls or anything else. No, it's the mirror positioning. The brake pedals are pretty conventional, right? You've got your brake and your accelerator pedal, but what's not conventional <laughs> is the fact that there's nothing keeping you from just putting your feet up. So this is probably one of the more roomy and comfortable trucks I've seen. One of Canoe's real design points is comfort, ergonomics, and design for the delivery 
personnel. So their seats are really quite well bolstered and comfortable. The layout and the leg room for the passenger even is just massive. And uh, I think if I had to be in here doing deliveries for Walmart for six or eight hours, I think I'd be pretty comfortable in this thing. So here is a look at the back. This would be the cargo area for the LDV. Now, this particular configuration is just their default, what they provide. But like Walmart, for example, is gonna have custom gear and equipment back here that is proprietary and we couldn't film. But you can imagine the opportunities and how much space there is back here. This is pretty cavernous. Now, this isn't a massive area, right? I mean, I can sit here and touch the edges almost. But this is their smaller variant. They do have an MPDV, a multi-purpose delivery vehicle, which is kind of a step up, more like the Amazon uh, Rivian truck. But for this size, I you could not get more stuff in here in a smaller footprint. And that's really what this is gonna be good at. This is gonna be such an easy car to drive around town. So if you're doing Uber delivery or grocery or anything else, Finding a parking spot can be tough in those big vans, but with this, you can pretty much park anywhere a normal car would. Again, four inches shorter than a Toyota Prius. And it has a really, really good turning radius. So it's just gonna be easy to maneuver and just, I think, a delight for most people doing delivery. This car, we drove around making one delivery and we got attention wherever we went. People came over to us and talked to us. It just has that kind of iconic look. So now for the driving impressions, I'm joined by Gary, who's gonna chaperone me, make sure I don't get into too much trouble. You bet, I'll take care of you. <laughs> I appreciate that. If you're used to any kind of gas delivery van, there's a couple of things about this that are gonna be completely different. First of all, one pedal driving, right? You don't have to use your brakes at all. You can speed up and slow down with just one pedal, which is great. The fly-by-wire steering, the steering-by-wire system, which means, let me show you how easy this is to maneuver around town. I wanna to make a U-turn. I wanna show you just how tight the turning radius is, okay? Here we go. I'll turn the wheel. That's it. <laughs> That's it not even one complete turn, and I am making a U-turn in the tightest turn circle I've ever seen. This is the rear wheel drive single motor variant. There will be eventually a dual motor all wheel drive variant as well. I'm curious to see how the turning circle is affected by the motors up front. I'm, sure. I'm curious about that. But this is probably the car that most would get. I think the rear wheel drive for Transit is probably the most popular spec for that vehicle. So I'd imagine unless you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow and other conditions, that's probably gonna be the model that most people get. So some other quick specs about this thing. Around an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack and they have 2170 cylindrical cells and it's good for about 200 to 250 miles of range. Now they say 200 plus and the reason is because it's a delivery van, right? You might load it up or not. So depending on how you use it, it'll probably affect how much range you get. Right. But that level of range is, I think, exactly what you need. The Ford Transit EV does about 120 miles per charge, which means, could you make it an entire day of Walmart deliveries? I'm not sure. But with this, I think you probably could. Just you come home at the end of the day and plug in. And knowing that 90% of Americans live 10 miles or closer to a Walmart, I can imagine this being a booming part of their business in the future. So you've got your controls off to the left, but the view from the driver's seat is cavernous and expansive. It's really special. The key takeaways, low center of gravity, good reliability and efficiency, it's electric, right? Combined with this view and also the fly-by-wire steering system and the incredible ratio on that lock-to-lock U-turn, -lock which is incredible you want to do u-turns all day don't you i do i'm gonna yeah. do, do one more yeah <laughs> here's one more 
so we're not doing slaloms and you know like acceleration tests but this is a delivery van which means the walmart employees are going to be using it as such and a fun fact i just heard from the walmart executive team is that the people doing the delivery are just their normal employees they don't have truck drivers or special personnel like if you're an associate at walmart you might be on the part of the team that does the deliveries for their online services so in that case you probably don't have thousands of hours of big rig experience and you're going to really appreciate driving a car that feels like a normal car i got to imagine that this is going to be their favorite car and i spent a little bit of time with dj during that delivery and his immediate feedback was this was his favorite of all the vehicles he's used for online delivery what do we think about the canoe ldv all the reasons why you wanted to watch this episode when you saw the thumbnail, they're all still here and pretty dang amazing. The view from the front is like nothing you've ever seen. You have to witness it to see it and believe it. But the challengers are still around and they do need to prove that they can reach scale and produce these vehicles. Now there is some good news on that front because they have partnered with a third party manufacturing company to start producing the Walmart 4500 order, which is a great idea. I've always said why not just outsourced manufacturing, especially early on. Other companies not just have to do all the R&B to design a car and now you have to build a factory and learn how to manufacture. It is a tall order for any one company. So I think with their plan to outsource manufacturing, get these out on the road, take feedback from Walmart, make them better, and finally get to customers, they might be on the winning track. So that is a really quick and rainy look at the Canoe LDV. Admittedly, very rushed, but hopefully you guys got an idea of what this thing is all about. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you so much for watching.